Hi, I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are in Los Angeles, California at the Lords of Customs shop. They built some pretty cool traditional hot rods and rat rods and low riders, that sort of thing. And just to be warned, they have a pretty vicious guard dog here. So don't be sneaking around at night or you're going to have to deal with this wild animal. Well, let's get a, uh, a look at the shop, a real tour with Jesse Kessliz. Come on in here. Is it safe to put this down? Put this dog down? It won't rip my leg off? He's good. He's okay. good. Right around here, he's good. Okay. There you go. Jesse, thank you very much for having us in your facility. Um, I ran across some of your work at the Grand National Roadster Show a couple of years ago. You had a couple of cars on display. Beautiful cars. And you, you did a great job of, of combining traditional with good engineering and, and good work. So we tracked you down and we're here today. So thank you for having us here. How'd this all come about? When did you start this? I actually started this in my backyard as a kid. Um, working on two wheel tricycles from two wheels mm. to three to three wheels from three wheels and the four wheels now yeah, yeah. you have a lot of cars here it looks like easily what 50 75 cars ready Those to be two, built yeah mm -hmm. i noticed it's a lot of 30s uh chevs a lot of 50s chevs some cadillacs mm -hmm. so that's what your clients are mostly going after yeah or, basically or, uh, my customers are more into chevys and cadillacs uh convertibles mm -hmm. um you know a few viewers here and there uh just the traditional um uh, stuff you see on the street mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we're going to take a look at one of your completed cars later on okay. but you have an awful lot of cars that are you know a long way from completion <laughs> yes, they're yes. they're almost not there some a little yes, bit of rust yes, yes. to various stages of construction yeah. maybe we can take a look at it okay to begin with I, it's, it's really impressive how many cars you have here where do you find them all you know, uh, surprisingly, a lot of these cars uh, get just given to me. Mm -hmm. People call me and just say, you know, I got a car in my backyard, got to get it out of here. You guys want it? And I'm there within five minutes picking it up in my trailer. So you yeah. get calls from people with yeah. 54 Chevs. I get calls from people <laughs> with, you know, old beat up Jeep Cherokees. <laughs> you know. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, I mean, I, surprisingly, like I said, I mean, I. I Almost every other day, I would get a call from somebody that has an old car sitting in their backyard and uh, belongs to their great grandfather or something, and just sitting there uh -huh. riding away and stuff. And instead of sending it out to the scrapyard, they'll call me and I said, I'm going to pick it up and, you know, hopefully build something, find a new home for it. Uh -huh. You know? A lot of your builds, are they custom orders for your clients, or you just build a car, put it out there, somebody buys it, and you move on to the next I, one? I, I do a little bit of both. Um, mainly, I, I, I'll build them. We'll, you know, we'll just flip a coin, which one's next, mm -hmm. we'll build it to wherever we think it's going to you know, look good, and um, you know, put it up for sale. You can just throw it on eBay or something, uh -huh. and uh, you know, see, what, see what we get for it. Jesse, there's an example of a car that's that's buried, and it's it's not anywhere near as buried as some of the cars <laughs> here. But it's sort of a general idea of of the surrounding area as far as av available vehicles, a '50 Merc. But you have another one you obviously dug out from the pile, and it looks like it's about a quarter of the way through its build. Another '50 Merc. This is obvious that it's headed in the right direction. It looks pretty cool. You have some serious rust is issues here, uh, which brings up the question, are, are you a, a lead guy, a Bondo guy, a fiberglass guy, or whatever it takes to fix it is what you do? Whatever it's gonna take to fix it, and uh, depending on the customer, uh, what they wanna spend. Mm -hmm. You know, if they want us to do lead, we'll do the lead. If they want to do Bondo, we'll do Bondo. Okay. You know, like I said, I mean, it's- Just depends difference. on the checkbook. Yeah, it depends, exactly. It depends how deep their pocket is, uh -huh. you know, and we go take it from there. Okay. You know, a lot of customers will pay us, um, you know, as we go, as we build, uh, in a, sort of like a payment plan uh -huh. deal, you know, and uh, you know, I mean, some of these cars run up to forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, sure. you know, yeah. once, you know, once mm -hmm. you really get into them, yeah. so. Well, my budget allows for like paper mache, do you mm -hmm. get into that? <laughs> <laughs> There's not much there. Um, this, yeah, I bet you, what, uh, a month from now, two months from now, this is gonna roughly, going to be something parked at the local yeah, car show? R roughly, about, I would say about two months, it should be uh, pretty much ready to go. Um, we're doing a chop on this, uh, 
customer wants uh, Lamborghini doors on it and uh, obviously all the brush repair. Um, all the floors are already done, so we just got to do all the exterior uh, rust on it now. <laughs> and um, all the airbag systems are already done. They got the, the metal clip on there, and, you know, but... Um, of all the cars that you have, the many, many cars that you have here, there's some that are are really considered desirable within the hobby. Mm -hmm. I see 38 Chevs here, I see 54 Chevs here, uh, the Mercs, the 4950-51 Mercs. Of course, James Dean gets some of the credit, but mm -hmm. somebody had to design a car that was good enough you know, to, yeah, to yeah, fit. Yeah, yeah. These have never gone out of favor. They've always been popular. It's what is it about this king, body design? It's the king of customs. Uh, it just looks so hot when it's done. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, I mean, you think about custom, the first car that comes to your head is a Merc. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard to say why everybody likes it so much and it's so expensive. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, literally, I mean, the car you just talked about that's buried, that car right there, I can turn around and sell it for about 10 grand in that condition, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, people are willing to pay, uh -huh. you know. These uh, style of Mercs seem to have somehow skirted around uh, some of the bizarre, they, they're bizarre now, they weren't at the time, but I don't remember seeing this body style of Mercs going through the shag carpet stage or the ridiculous paint job stage. Mm -hmm. These have, they were, kind of new in their design when they were being customized back in 51 and 52 mm -hmm. and 53 or whatever, but the styling cues and the things that were done on the cars back then, what was cool then is still cool now. Yeah, it, it, uh, I mean, it's come so far. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a traditional, it's just uh, something that people just uh, fell in love with back then or are still in love with now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it just keeps going and, you know. So, no flathead in this. You've decided to uh, update a little bit. What are we looking at there? Yeah, that's got the 454 out of a 73 uh, Chevy uh, truck, mm -hmm. uh, which is something what the customer wanted. Uh, the customer supplied the motor. And uh, once we get it all to where we know it's all lined up, it's going to get pulled out and get rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, that's what the customer wants what the customer gets. Uh -huh. The Mercury that we were looking at, the 50 Merc, is, looks like it's headed towards being kind of your, uh, you know, a customized 50 Merc, like yeah. we've, uh, the, the viewers have all seen over the years, yeah, the over, over the decades. Mm -hmm. We have a 38 Chev here. When I think of 38 Chevs now, I think of them as as low riders or or you know they seem to end up. I see a lot of them in California with with the air conditioner off the yeah. window and the visor. And the visor. Uh, why do you think the the car culture went so much for and it's pretty much 38s. I mean, there's of course at either side of it, the, the, but but the the 38s I see a lot of them fixed up. What do you think it is? Uh, I'm gonna say the body style. Uh, the body style is just a, a more of a traditional. Um, it's not really considered a low rider. It's more called of uh, people call it a bomb. Bomb. Okay. Um, just for their shape. Uh, you know, it's a bomb. Well, the the fact that four doors are embraced. Uh -huh. I really like that. Yeah. You know, this yeah, this yeah. thing of decades yeah. of, oh, it's a four door, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't yeah. seem to apply in some aspects no, of no. the hobby. Uh, uh, there's a uh, certain uh, uh, type, uh, a lot of people prefer the four door and the two door. When back then, back in the day, they, nobody wanted the four door, right. everybody was looking for the two door. Now it's like everybody's looking for the four door, uh -huh. uh, you know, to create your, uh, your typical old school bomb, mm -hmm. you know, what is referred to, um, you know, four door with the suicide doors, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, they try to go with uh, every little piece of um, original. Uh, a lot of accessories. Part, a lot of accessories. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, I mean, everything from from a hat holder to an umbrella holder to an, uh, an original uh, 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 flashlight holder, uh -huh. you know, which you can pay, even the flashlight, you, I've seen guys pay up to $2,000 just for a flashlight, wow. just for the original flashlight. Uh -huh. uh, you know, so, you know, and people, it's it just, that's what people are looking for, uh -huh. you know, just the original. You, you, we've kind of uh, touched on it, you have low riders, hot rods, traditional rods, rat rods, low rider bombs, 
and they all sort of are overlapping and mm -hmm. right now within the hobby there's sort of this well don't call them rat rods call them traditional rods and then some of the guys know they're rat rods and and have we gotten to the point where the whole thing is kind of meaningless we need to stop worrying about it or yeah i mean me personally uh you know i see them all let just uh uh, an automotive that you know uh, we all have our own personal taste but it's all in the same uh, idea mm -hmm. of just re maybe not restoring to the original specs some people will like orig original some people like going semi custom mm -hmm. some people will go with just wild custom uh -huh. but it's all comes back to the same uh, hobby of having something to do with your vehicle uh -huh. you know and, and the personal taste thing I'm always I brought this up on the show uh, probably too many times but I'm just mystified by the fact that years and years and years and years and years go by and this particular car is not cool and then all of a sudden somebody anoints it with a magic wand and everybody loves it. Yeah. You know, I have a 58 Rambler American yeah. which I get teased about all the time. I like them but Gary Metters from the good guys built one and that was the you know that was a magic wand yeah. and they're starting to pop up and and now instead of it being this warm and fuzzy thing I get teased about it's you know these things are pretty cool and this is yeah. pretty cool yeah. uh, so it's weird and, and this is a good example right here 36 shifts, man, they were an ugly stepchild for a long yeah, time. Yeah. I always liked yeah. them, but now people are looking for them and liking yeah, them. Yeah. And it's, it's a cool body style. Yeah. Another example of a car that everybody's always loved 57 Chevs and 59s came into their own, 59s and 60s, and 58 Chevrolets, I remember when they were just sort of big piggy cars that your, your aging uh, Elks Club grandfather drove. Uh, and they, they, of course, they did a pretty good job with the Impalas on them, but they were not getting anywhere near the money that the other cars were and about what 15 years ago 10 years ago it, it, it started happening yeah it, 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 it's one of the most desirable cars right now and uh maybe one of the hardest uh, cars to find because of the same reason nobody wanted them so they would end up at the scrap yard and stuff and so they're very hard to find right now and, and the impalas they, you know, the, the Impalas, of course, uh, uh, everybody knows this. They, they have the, the, the chrome uh, slats up here, and the, the roof is two inches lower than yeah. the, the Bel Air. Uh, they have this, this, and uh, I believe that the Impalas have three taillights on three each tail side and the yeah, two, yeah. and then they have uh, this. The little vent. And that's what uh, 58 Impalas always look to me like a 58 Bel Air that somebody, you know, the George Barris got a hold of, or yeah, Jesse yeah. got a hold of. Yeah, yeah. And, but Impalas were the one to have, and, and that's the only one to have, and then Bel Airs became okay, and then Del Rays became yeah, I mean, okay, and, and now anything they can find is yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, even a, a, a four-door uh, uh, Bel Air or a four-door, uh, you know, even a wagon right uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. it, 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 it is our boy. Any, any, anything out from the uh, 50s and 40s. If somebody brings you something, uh, you know, if somebody brings you a, a 56 Hudson, is that fine with you? You'll go ahead and take fine care of it for them? Not a problem. Okay. That's my Hudson is a Hudson right here. Uh -huh. Anything that is different to me. You know, I probably enjoy more than than something I do every day. Uh -huh. you know, the, the Hudson. Which, what year is this? 49. The 49 Hudson. 49 Hudson. Mm -hmm. This is a great example of of duh, in that they look so similar to the 49, 50, 51 Mercs, but for a long time, oh, it's a, well. Of course, they had their NASCAR days mm -hmm. when everybody liked them, yeah. but from about 55 on, they were old news. Yeah. And up until the recent past, and then the duh factor is they look so much like those the Mercs, Mercs yeah. and people are going, oh, they do, and now mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they're fi finding yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at some cars that are, are approaching, uh, you know, maybe halfway through the build or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they, they get closer and closer and it's, it's time to paint them. Underneath this tarp, you have a 48 Chev fleet line, which incidentally was what I drove my, my junior year in high school. What has, what has happened from there to this? I know you're prepping it for paint, but 
Is there a special technique at the Lords of Customs or anything that you do here with your paint that other people don't do or what do you specialize in when it comes to paint? I can't really say I, I, I do anything different than everybody else because I'm not sure what everybody else does. Uh -huh. um, but one thing I do that I do know that I do take a lot of pride in my paints. Uh, you know, we will block the cars 10, 15 times before we actually spray them. Mm -hmm. uh, I do all the spraying here. These guys are the guys that do all my body work and stuff. And uh, they'll come and tell me the car's ready to paint. I come back outside, take a look at them, like, no, block it out again. Uh -huh. You know, and sometimes they'll get mad, but I want to make sure that they're straight. Um, like I said, I can't say I do anything different. I'm pretty sure every painter uh, probably, you know, wants to paint up to come out nice and, and straight so do you get into the uh, 30 and 40 thousand dollar paint jobs I'm sure if somebody insists on giving you a check oh yeah big, you're gonna you, take you, it if they want to send me 50 thousand that's not a problem with yeah. me I, I'll take it you know uh -huh. <laughs> but uh no my, my paint jobs run from uh, eight five to being anywhere between five to ten thousand dollars okay uh, for an average paint job now I've some, we, we have gotten some paint jobs where they really want to get really detailed with the cars and uh, you know a bunch of patterns or you know different different type of uh, paints and stuff where it can, it can add up. But uh, you know our paint up here roughly uh, anywhere between five to ten ten thousand. Mm -hmm. How's your track record been as far as your cars getting out there and and they show up in a lot of shows and pick up a trophy now and then and and when they're out there when they leave this shop. Are they like babies or your children that you're worried about out there, or they're gone, they're history? I, I, ironically, um, just uh, two weeks ago, one of my customers' cars that I built, probably bought five or six cars for, uh, his garage, he called me up on a Sunday, uh, he lives up in uh, Hollywood Hills, his garage caught on fire. Mm. Uh, four of the cars that I built uh, oh, destroyed. Oh, man. And uh, yes, it does hurt. Yeah. <laughs> because I do treat them as if they were my own. Uh -huh. You know, if I build them, it's part of me, you know, part of here at the shop. Uh, it's, I don't take this as a job. You know, to me, it's something I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I treat these cars, uh, you know, almost as if they were my own, you know. Uh, customers, Paid because has them built, but I'm the one that's doing all the work. Uh -huh. At least that's the way I see it. And uh, you know, my, most of the customers do always come back. Uh, you know, they get a little chip, they have a little problem, or they just want to stop by and have a drink of coffee or stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know? And um, but yeah, you know, we we treat them as uh, as if they are they're our own, and we do. I do take a lot of pride. Jesse. At what point? I mean, you you have a cowl here. You have some fenders. A '51 Chev. Uh, but there's not much else going on here. At what point do you, you mentioned off camera that you pick some stuff up on Craigslist for two or three hundred bucks and it's got some pieces here and there. What makes you decide at, at whatever you have and how much rust and how many dents and how many holes, at what point is it, it's just not worth going after this or, you know, I think I can bring this back to life. What, what makes that choice, that you decision? Know, it, it, it. There's really no, uh, I, ha I haven't run into anything yet that I can say it's unrepairable. Uh -huh. uh, you know, if anything, you know, we end up two or three cars and all of them look like junk. And we know we can make one car out of those three. Mm -hmm. So I, I can never, I, I would never really say I, I, I would turn away a car because it's too far gone. I know I can use... If I can't build it, I can use parts off of it uh -huh. to create one nice car. Uh -huh. So it just takes time and money is all. It takes time and money, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. More time than anything else. Uh -huh. This must have happened where somebody comes in and I'm just going to pull numbers out of the air here. Somebody comes in and, hey, I want you to, I've, here's what I have. It's a mess. It belonged to my grandfather, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I want you to turn it into something that looks like the, the car in this magazine. And you're looking at this and, <laughs> and uh, you know, the first thing you're thinking is, oh, oh boy, finally I can buy a boat and, and move <laughs> into that uh, view property house. But how many times do you run into situations where you build a car and, and you know, it, it's, it's not difficult to spend $200,000 having a car built, but you, you think, Man, this guy, he's going to end up, uh, he's going to put, say, $150,000 into a car that when he's done, it's going to be worth forty or fifty. Do you just go, well, he's, yeah, he's the yeah, customer? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, 
I, I, I've have had a situation like that where a customer wants to spend, you know, hundred thousand dollars on a vehicle when the vehicle is only going to be worth twenty grand once it's done, and I would try to talk, you know convince them out of it. Uh, but then again, there's some customers which are stubborn. And, yeah. You know, instead of sending them somewhere another shop and having them spend the money, uh, okay, well, you might as well take that. I'll do it. You yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I try. I don't like taking advantage of, of, of uh -huh. any of my customers or anybody, and I try to lead them in the right direction on building their their, their vehicles. And um, but sometimes, like I said, they will be stubborn, and you can't. You know, you, you, it's just like knocking on wood. Yeah. You, know, you can't. Well, can't I, get them to change their mind. Uh -huh. I appraise a lot of cars, mm -hmm. and I, you know, a week doesn't go by that somebody doesn't show up with a car that, hey, I put a hundred thousand dollars into this car, therefore it's worth a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> well, most of the time I got some bad news for you, and, and <laughs> yes, we talk yes. about it at the front end. But the the average seems to be fifty cents on the dollar is the yeah. market value of no. it, and if you're really lucky. 75 cents on the yeah, dollar. Yeah. If you're going to build a vehicle, don't expect to get your money back out of it. You're building these because of the hobby and you enjoy the vehicle. Every one of these cars is a work of art. And to just put that out into the world must feel good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, every time a car leaves here uh, with a satisfied customer, it's like, it, it's a big pleasure for me. Uh, especially to see the cars at a local show or stuff like that, and everybody around the car. And you know, people start pointing like, "Yeah, that's the guy with the abilities and stuff." That gives me a you know a lot of pleasure. Uh -huh. We've seen them uh, rusty piles in the back. We've seen them in the, the the build process. We've seen them in the paint booth. Here you have a finished product, a 41 Chev, which interestingly enough has a lot of the stuff on it we talked about uh -huh. earlier. Accessories. The accessories. Uh -huh. Tell us about this car. Oh, uh, 41 uh, four-door Chevy, uh, special deluxe, uh, built for a customer. Um, you got probably most of the accessories you can think about. Um, you know, your banjo steering wheel, your wraparound uh, guards. Um, this is your typical bomb mm -hmm. that they call. Uh, it's not your hot rod, it's not your low rider, uh, it's not your custom. You know, it's, it's, it's a bomb uh, and uh, very original. Uh, very hard to find uh, Fulton visors, uh, your air cooler, mm -hmm. um, you know, all, all, all the accessories um, that were available back in 1941. Mm -hmm. And this is a car that, boy, if you wanted to have a um, homogenize, I guess would be the word, if you wanted to build a, build a car that appealed to the hot rodders, the low riders, the purists, the stock guys, uh, this does it. You know, yes. It's got everything yeah. going yes. for it's it. It's got everything going for uh -huh. it. Yeah. Well, uh, Lords of Customs has a lot going for it. Uh, we uh, great place you have here. If somebody wants to get a hold of you about having a car built or, or just they, some questions. They can go on our website. Uh -huh. okay. Go on our website and uh, lordsofcustoms.com mm -hmm. or uh, give us a call or just stop by. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesse, thank you very much for being a gracious host. Pleasures on mine. Pleasures on mine. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll go find, in fact, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to go find the worst rust bucket. There's nothing left but just the roof. I'm going to bring <laughs> it to you and see what you can do. Bring it on down. Okay. Bring Thanks, it on Jesse. down. All right. And thank you for watching the show this week. We had a great time and we'll see you again next time. See you then. Bye-bye.